Welcome back, everybody. As we all know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and so today we've got Dr. Teresa Weeding here from LDS Hospital to talk about a really cool opportunity to use yoga and lunch to help bring attention to the fact that Utah women need to get mammograms. So thank you so much for joining us. Let's You're talk welcome. about why is the mammogram so important and why people really should be signing up to have that happen for them. Well, the mammogram is the best screening tool that we have to catch breast cancer early. So in that way, it is the only test that's been proven to actually save lives mm -hmm. from breast cancer. Some people think that mammograms actually prevent breast cancer somehow. They don't, but they do catch it early, which is when it's a lot more treatable. So mm -hmm. getting your mammograms is important. Uh, Dr. Reading, why do Utahns have the second lowest rate in the country for getting them? What are you hearing from women? You know, a lot of women have um, concerns about getting mammograms has radiation and that will cause breast cancer. Actually, the mammogram radiation is very low. There are some other studies that have a lot of radiation that can cause problems. But mammogram radiation is low. It's very safe. And it really is the best thing that you can do to find breast cancer early. So to protect yourself, it's the best thing to do to get regular mammograms. I think a lot of women say, well, my mom didn't have breast cancer. My grandma did, and it's not in my family. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it. But that simply isn't the case. We all need to. That is true. We do all need to. It does make a difference if you have a big family history. You are at a little higher risk. But every woman, just by virtue of being a woman, is at risk for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And everyone needs to get mammograms. OK, can we go? over some of these risk factors uh, that go into getting breast cancer. Um, number one, limit alcohol. So there are a number of things that women can do um, to try to decrease their risk of breast cancer. You can't change your family history. You can't change genetics. But if you decrease the amount of alcohol that you drink or limit it to at the very most one drink a day, that helps to d reduce your risk. Also, um, weight gain, especially as an adult, increases your risk for breast cancer. So try to keep your weight down to a reasonable level, a good, safe, healthy level. Um, there, exercise, if you exercise regularly, that also decreases your risk for breast cancer. You have smoking on here, too. Smoking, you don't want to smoke, especially b before your menopausal has an increased okay. risk for breast cancer. And then breastfeeding on there. I thought that was an interesting on the list of things that we can do to, pr to kind of prevent at least a, a portion of our chances of getting breast cancer. Why is breastfeeding uh, something we can do? You know, nobody really knows for sure, but breastfeeding does seem to protect somewhat against breast cancer. And the longer you breastfeed, the more protection you get. It's not purely protective, though. You can still get breast cancer mm -hmm. if you've done breastfeeding. But it's good for your baby, and it's good for you. So it's a good thing to do. All right. Love it. The Limit the dose and duration of hormone therapy. Yes, yeah, so combination hormone therapy for postmenopausal women has been shown to increase your risk for breast cancer. So there are people who really feel like that's the thing that makes them live their life <laughs> to have their hormone replacement therapy. But if you can decrease it so that it's less than three to five years, that's when you start to get into a higher risk for breast cancer. So talk to your doctor about alternate things that you can try if you still feel like you need hormone replacement after that time, or never start it if you can get by without it. Fascinating. There's another one on the list, the last one, avoid exposure to radiation and environmental pollution. Yeah, so there's a lot of looking at what can cause breast cancer because it's really multifaceted. So um, some environmental pollutants, we don't really have a list of what causes breast cancer, but um, certainly radiation such as CT scans of your chest and things like that, that has a lot more ionizing radiation that can cause cancers, not only breast cancer, but other cancers. So talk to your doctor about the tests that you really need and try to limit the amount of medical tests especially that you might need. Okay, we have to talk about Saturday because we're talking yes. yoga and food. Yes. Everybody's going to be there. What's the plan? Yeah, so Saturday is a day that any woman can come to to LDS Hospital. We're having a, uh, an event where a breast cancer survivor is going to lead a yoga class. And then after that, we're going to have a healthy brunch. Mm -hmm. And I will be there to talk again about ways that people can decrease their own personal risk for breast cancer and hopefully kind of empower women to thinking that they really can make a difference and not just have to sit back and accept that one day I might get breast cancer. Knowledge is power. Yes. Knowledge do you recommend power. getting a mammogram every year, Dr. Reading? You know, I still do. There's been always some uh, variation in what has been said mm -hmm. nationally. But still, I think that after age 40, a yearly mammogram is the safest thing to do. 
I love that she's going to be there. You can ask questions and chat, though, if you do have questions about anything. Uh, she's so great. Do go to that event and do go to our website to get all the information. Good for you, Tut.com uh, slash GTU. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You for being here. All right, coming up next, a nationally award winning blogger is going oh. to tell all of us how you can win those recipe contests. All right. Glenn, and still.